And hey guys, uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about solving and graphing inequalities. And um, inequalities, this is the sort of stuff that we've been, uh, you've been doing since you were, heck, I think like in first grade. So uh, you should be pretty familiar, at least with these. These signs here, the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to things, um, I know you've been introduced to them, but we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, what we're going to use them for in graphing inequalities. Uh, whenever we graph inequalities, we of course use a number not, uh, number line. And uh, graphing inequalities also requires that we understand less than and greater than as it relates to a number line. In other words, anything that is uh, less than, for example, if I said the number 3, anything that's less than 3 is to the left on a number line. Obviously, anything greater than 3 would be to the right on a number line. We are going to have to use these sort of points on a number line, and we call these, we'll call those boundary points. Um, one is filled in and one is open. The one that's filled in has to do with these things here. When it says less than or uh, equal to, greater than or equal to, what that means is we're including the, the boundary. So if I put this here and here, that means I'm including four. If I have it open, it refers to these, meaning, um, uh, for example, 4 is not equal to 4, so I wouldn't include it. So we call this one that's uh, filled in inclusive, or we include it. This one is exclusive because we uh, exclude the actual number, the actual boundary point. Okay, um, I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick. Some of the basics that you should be coming into this class with. But let's just make sure we understand. And some sort of variable uh, uh, algebraic inequality here where we have a variable. Some unknown or unknown number is, and we read this, is less than or equal to 6. Some number is less than or equal to 6. Well, uh, here's 6 over here. So it does the number 6... Would no, if I put in a 6 into this, would that be true? Is 6 less than or equal to 6? Sure, that's true. So since that's true, I could just go ahead and fill that in. But what else is true? Well, it says all x's are all numbers that are less than or equal to 6. So we would fill this in and say all these numbers over here also are true. And we represent that with this big fat arrow saying that these are all true over here. Now, um, sometimes I've had students come to me and say, oh, I have some teacher told me that wherever this points here, that's where the arrow points. That looks like it might be handy, but it doesn't work in this case. Okay, this is the exact same thing. And what this is saying, all numbers that are less than six, well, this is our same arrow. So, don't use that as a memory device wherever this points is where the arrows point. That doesn't work very well. Read it starting from the variable side. In other words, wherever the variables start reading there. The solution to the inequality are all numbers, and you start here, that are less than 6. So we all know that this means less than over here, and this is greater than, so let's just start from there. All numbers that are less than 6, less than or equal to. Okay, when we're talking about solving inequalities, we solve inequalities very similar to how we solve an equation. We want to get x alone. So I want to get rid of the 4. I add 4 to both sides. And what I get, I get is x is greater than negative 3. This is considered the solution. I've isolated my variable, and I say x is greater than negative 3. This negative 3 is considered our boundary point. So we find negative 3 over here, and we put our boundary point, and we notice it's saying all numbers greater than negative 3. It does not include negative 3, so we don't fill it in. And what are all the numbers greater than negative 3? All those going that way. In uh, inequality like this, again, we're handling it exactly like an equation. I want to isolate x, so I divide both sides by a positive 3. And I get x is, and again, reading from the variable side, less than or equal to 2. 
this is our solution this is our boundary point at two I go to two I notice that I'm gonna fill it in here because it's saying all numbers that are less than or equal to two and what are all the numbers less than well duh they're all here right so that's the graph remember this is the solving part this is the graphing part okay the one exception to handling it exactly like an equation is here okay here well, if I want to get X alone I divide both sides by negative 2 but what happens is my inequality must switch in fact anytime I multiply or divide an entire inequality by a negative you must switch the sense of the inequality in other words some people think of the flipping it that's fine but we have to switch that now let's think about that is it really true well I'm saying that this is our solution so I'm gonna graph this all X's that are greater than negative 3 um, notice the boundary point is at negative 3 it's uh, does it's excluding negative 3 is not a solution to this but it's saying all these numbers are if I did that right then any of these numbers I could plug in to right here and it would be true so why don't I do that why don't I plug in I don't know uh, 5 I'll plug in 5 now if I say X is 5 and I plug it into here negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 and it's saying that that's true is that true is negative 10 less than 6 yes so that it's true here and that means it's true for everything else on this side of the boundary. Okay, let's try a couple problems. Why don't you go ahead and try that one? Okay, I want to get x alone, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. If I do that, of course, these will cancel. I'll get x is greater than or equal to negative 24. And so my boundary point is at negative 24. And I'm going to just, that's our solution, and I'm just going to do this. Now, notice the way I drew my uh, number line. I don't want you guys to draw out a number line that has every single number, okay? Because negative 24, that would just be ridiculous to try to draw it all the way. All I want from you guys is a line. I want a zero and then two little tick marks, one representing negative, one representing positive. Find the negative. Notice that it's a closed or filled in boundary point and it says all X is greater than negative 24. Okay, try the next one. Okay, here, in getting X alone, I'm going to need to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 3 over 4. Well, that's negative 4 over 3. But if I do it to this side, I have to do it to this side. Notice I've multiplied both sides by a negative. Those are both sides by negative, so that means I have to switch this to here. Now my x is alone, right, because all this stuff is going to cancel out. And over here, this cancels, that's a 4. 4 times negative 4 is a negative 16. <coughs> Excuse me. This is my solution. My boundary point is at negative 16. This is open because it says all x's that are larger than or greater than negative 16. Okay, number three, give that one a shot. Okay, here, it's just like an equation. Uh, I'm gonna wanna get rid of this denominator, and so I'm gonna clear the fraction. Now, this isn't the only way to handle this, but by clearing the fraction, um, it makes it uh, a fairly simple problem. So I'm gonna multiply everything in the inequality by two. When I do that, I've eliminated the denominator. Now my sense of the inequality hasn't changed because they're multiplied by a positive 2. I'm going to subtract the constant from both sides. Now I have a negative x is less than or equal to 28. But remember, I want to isolate the x, so that has to be a positive coefficient. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. But when I divide by negative 1, the sense of the inequality must switch. So my solution is x is greater than or equal to negative 28 and when we graph that our boundary point is at negative 28 notice it is uh, inclusive in other words we are including the boundary of negative 28 and it's saying all uh, numbers greater than that so our arrow goes to the right 
Okay, let's give this one a shot. Okay, here, like before, I'm going to want to uh, clear the denominator, so I'm going to use the uh, least common denominator of this, which of these, which is 10. And when I clear the fraction, if you do it correctly, you'll get to here. Now, notice, anytime we clear a fraction, we're multiplying through by a positive number, so the sense of the inequality doesn't change. Now, to isolate x, I subtract 5 from both sides and divide by 8. This represents our solution to the inequality. Our boundary point is a positive boundary point at 1 over 8. It says all x's that are less than that. And so our arrow goes off to the left. Number 5. Go ahead and give that one a shot. Okay, this one could be tough because of our negative out here. And uh, sometimes students wonder, what, what should I do with that? Well, um, I know I want to use cross multiplication. So my rule of thumb is any same time I see a negative out here, or if I even see it in the bottom, I'll go ahead and move it to the top. It'll make it easy because when I do use my cross products, okay, 8 times negative 3, this is a positive, so that's all good. We have a negative 24 on this side. This x is being multiplied by 5, and that 5x doesn't affect the inequality whatsoever. Now to isolate x, we divide both sides by 5. I have a boundary point that's negative, and it's saying all x's that are greater than negative 24 over 5. The boundary is open, and my arrow goes to the right. Okay, our last one. Give this one a shot. Okay, we are going to uh, clear the fraction. Again, I only have one denominator, this 3, so I'm going to multiply through by 3. Uh, when I do that, I get to here. Add 33 to both sides. Divide by 2. Notice I, at no point did I multiply or divide by a negative, so my sense of the inequality stays. All x's that are less than or equal to negative 6. This is my solution. My boundary point's at negative 6. It's filled in, and the arrow goes to the left. So I hope you got all those. I'll see you in class tomorrow.